Hi everyone and welcome back to The Crafty Author. My name is Anissa. I am The Crafty Author and welcome to the block of the month. This will be block number 10. This is October's block. Um, I had to think about that for a minute. I can't believe it's almost over with. Um, anyway, I do realize that this particular block is a little bit late. Um, I have been working on this block and it has even been a little bit tricky for me, to be perfectly honest. So, I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. You guys might find it to be very easy. Once I got the hang of it, I found it to be easy. It was just a little confusing trying to get all of um, everything together. So, it's not a hard block. The block that we are going to be working on is called the Martha Washington Star. And it is beautiful and I love it. And it's gonna look great in our sampler quilt. And this is what it looks like. It's pretty awesome, right? So what you have here is a pinwheel inside of a sawtooth star. And um, I'm just telling you, I think it's pretty doggone amazing. So this was my practice one that I did. Um, you can see that I made some mistakes there in lining things up. It is very, very, very important to pay attention to what you are doing, as I found out myself. Um, so do not be in a hurry when you are trying to get this quilt block done. Because... Um, this will be on my blog if you're following along and you want to continue to find all of the blocks of the month that we have done since January. This will be in there. Um, so it will probably take me an extra day to put it up just because I'm recording this later at night. So wait until Thursday to, or I'm sorry, Wednesday before you go looking for this block. <laughs> okay. Um, measurements of course will be down in the description box for you so that you know what you need. What you're going to need right now is you're going to need one four and a half inch square of a darker print. You will need one four and a half, oh, I cannot speak, one four and a half inch square of a lighter print. Then you are going to need two four inch blocks of a light print. You will need four three and a half inch blocks of a light print. Four four and a half inch blocks of a light print and four four inch blocks of a darker print. I hope I said four inches. So you need four four inches. So you're gonna need a total of six four inch light blocks, four four inch darker blocks, three and a half, four three and a half inch square blocks of the lighter, and then one four and a half of a lighter and one four and a half of a darker. Like I said, I'll write that down. It gets confusing, I know. So what we're going to do first in this is we are going to build our pinwheel. This is the part that you're gonna need to really, really pay attention to. So I am just going to jump right in and we're gonna get started. So I'm going to set aside the um, squares that we're not going to be using for right now. All right, so just going to set those to the side and um, we'll come back to those in a minute. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to work with these two four and a half inch squares. And all that we're going to do is we're going to put right sides facing each other. Looks like I might have cut these a little bit wonky all right so i've got those together and what i'm going to do i'm working with a sharpie you might want to use a pencil on your lighter colored fabrics but i am just going to use my sharpie and i did not have those correct because my lighter color is so light that i can't even really tell <laughs> so all right, so I'm just gonna take my ruler and I am going to measure 
from corner to corner and I'm just going to draw a diagonal line here. Okay, so now you can see my orange line here. Then I'm gonna come, go to the sewing machine and I'm gonna sew a quarter of an inch on this side of the line and a quarter of an inch on this side of my line. And then I will be right back. Okay, I've just gone ahead and I have sewn that. You can see that I sewed a quarter of an inch on both sides of my line. Now I'm just gonna take my rotary cutter and just cut straight on that line. And you could also use scissors and you could use a ruler and I am just cutting. Ta-da, like so. Next, what I'm going to do is I'm going to finger press to the dark side. You want to definitely press that. And you don't want to stretch your fabric while doing it. And then I will take these two pieces over to my iron because I want them to be nice and flat. So that's what I'll do next. I'll just take them over, press it, and I'll be right back square this up to four inches. Now, how I do this is I'm gonna line up right here on my line, on my ruler. I've got a diagonal line going right here at the four inch mark here. And I'm gonna trim off the excess without trying to move. So sometimes this can move as you just saw, so don't worry. If it does, you just get right back into position, okay? Now would be a good time to use your rotating mat if you have one of those. And I'm just gonna spin my square and I'm gonna line up again four inches. So I'm lining up on my diagonal line here and my four inches here. So this is where I'm coming up with my four inch square. And it usually pops right into place and I'm just trying to make sure that I am right on that edge because this is so light that I'm having a hard time seeing it. All right, so you wanna do that to both of your squares. Now this is where we wanna pay attention because it can get a little bit tricky, all right? This is what gives us our pinwheel, and the way that the pinwheel looks in this center area here. So normally, I've shown you how to make a pinwheel. Let me find it. This is how you make a regular pinwheel. But this one is different because it's made with half square triangles. Okay, so this is how we do this. Those other two pieces that we set aside, those two inch four, those four inch pieces that we have, those two, we're going to put them together, right sides facing each other. Okay. Our seam right now is going this way. On this side, we're gonna make it go this way. It's gonna go the opposite direction, all right? Again, I will use my orange pin to mark this from corner to corner. We will sew a quarter of an inch on this side and a quarter inch on this side. We're gonna do the same thing with this one. Make sure my right sides are facing each other again. So my seam, trying to get this as even as I possibly can. So my seam is going this way, like that. So this one, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm just gonna draw my line that way. So you just wanna draw your other line the opposite direction. This will result in the four pieces that we'll need to make the triangle. So I'm gonna go sew a quarter of an inch. As you can see right here, I'm just guessing quarter inch. So a quarter of an inch down here and the same over here. But we're gonna cut those open. Now we're also gonna cut this one open or in half, sorry, right on that line that we drew. 
close our rotary cutter. Now I'm going to open and I'm going to finger press. Actually, I'm going to take these over to the iron and I'm going to press them out. Square these up to a three and a half, three and a half inches. So again, I'm going to line up over here. And I'm going to cut. You want to do this now because it'll save you a whole lot of time and headaches and a little bit. Okay? So make sure you're lining up on your diagonal and your three and a half, and there you go. All right, so that is how you would square these up. And that's how you get your perfect three and a half inch right there. So, all we're going to do is lay one piece out like so. Then we're going to lay out, and it is important to do this before we um, do anything because laying out the pinwheel can be a little bit tricky. As you can see. Okay. And then... I think it's going to go like that and like that. And that is how we make the pinwheel. So what I do is I take my two top pieces here and I'm going to mark here on this side so that I know that this is where I want to sew down my quarter of an inch. And I will be matching up these two seams right here boom and boom okay so there's those and then i'm going to do the same thing with these two again line it up and i'm just going to mark it right here so that i know that this is where i'm going to sew this is the side all right so now i'm at the sewing machine and i am sitting in my pink chair but you can't see it and <laughs> i get asked about my pink chair all the time um, so I'm just going to sew straight down here. And now I'm going to sew my other side down. Come on, baby. There we go. And now those two pieces are together. And I'm actually going to leave them joined like that. And I'm going to press one side this way. And I'm going to press the other side that way. I wanna make sure though that this is correct. And it is, okay. So you wanna make sure that when you open up these seams that your pinwheel looks like the pinwheel. So, now what I do is I take these two pieces and I flip them together. And since I pressed our seam in opposite directions, they're going to nest. See, they nest like so. Because one is going, one seam, as you can see, goes this way. And this one goes that way. And when you put them together, they come together like so. And you shouldn't even have to worry about it. Um, and so what I'm going to do, though, is I am going to put a clip right here. Because I really want that point to come out. This is what makes the point for your um, pinwheel come out. Is by nesting. So, let's see if I've done it right. If I've done it right, this will turn out really well. If I didn't, then, well, it'll turn out. It'll just turn out okay. It'll be fine. All right. My sewing machine doesn't seem to be loving this thread that I'm using. It's a kind of a bummer. It's expensive thread. Okay. 
that part is finished, I'm just going to trim off this little piece of thread here. I'm going to use a lead because I don't like the way that this is not laying for me. What the heck? What happened to my other lead? Oh, it's on my lap. I like to use a lead. If you're going to go on to um, a piece like I just did there, it's best to use a lead. That way you don't get a lot of nesting or bunching on your, your project. What I do now, ooh, that turned out really good. All right, so what I do now is I take my, um, my pinwheel and I snip that little piece of thread that we left. You'll see it. We snip, we snip that and it's the thread that we left so that it would help us to um, put the pinwheel together. Now I'm just gonna open up that seam on the back. This is gonna make it so that there's not so many seams so that it's not so thick. And I just press it down with my fingernail. That's all. And I will do this, I will be taking this to the iron as well and I will press this seam open as flat as I can. Okay, but this is what we have. Ta-da. Okay, moving right along. That's what our pinwheel looks like once it's been pressed. Okay, it looks fantastic. And as you can see, the nesting is what makes those points come together really nicely. All right, now what we need to do so we need to grab our other four inch squares. So we need our four dark ones and our four light ones. And what we're going to do is on our light ones, we are going to take our uh, ruler and our pin, and we're going to flip these right sides facing down. And we are going to take a ruler and our pencil or our marker, we're going to draw a diagonal line on each one of these. All right. Now what we do, so we'll take these with our other ones, our four inch darker squares, and we are going to, I don't know why those didn't cut apart. We are going to put them together, right sides facing each other. You can pin these. Um, I'm not gonna pin them, but you are more than welcome to pin them. Actually, I would recommend it. You're gonna sew a quarter of an inch on each side of that seam. Just like we did with the others, okay? So, right on this side and that side. So you're gonna chain stitch. This is the fun and easy part. And just make sure that you have your right sides facing each other. There's nothing worse than finding out that you didn't sew them right. I've done that so many times. When you're starting out, you just sew right onto your piece of fabric and it's all nice and clean. This is called chain piecing. And you just do them all at the same time. I am just sewing my quarter inch on all of those, on that side of that uh, marker that we drew there. I'm gonna stop here and I'm going to lift my needle and my presser foot and I'm gonna just pull my thread out and I'm going to start on my lead again like so, and then I'm just gonna start sewing onto my fabric. And 
as you can see, we've already sewn our pieces together. So now what we do is we just clip those threads that are in between there. We're gonna clip off that lead. I'm gonna use my scissors this time because I wanna show you what you can do if you don't have a rotary cutter or, yeah, rotary cutter and um, a ruler. You can just take a pair of scissors and cut straight on that line, okay? I'm also gonna do it on this one. Now I'm gonna keep these um, together because if I were to make a mistake in my sewing on one of these, then it wouldn't match up with one of those. So this way it stays consistent. You should have eight of these now. This is the portion that's going to make your star. That's why it's important to keep these together. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to finger press this to the dark, but I'm actually gonna take this over to the iron and I'm just gonna press all of these, but I'm going to keep these together, okay? So I don't wanna mix them up. We want to trim these down to three and a half inches. So that's what I shall do. Again, I line up right here on that line with my diagonal and I cut. I'm gonna spin this around. I will line up again on that, oops, too far. I'm gonna line up again on my diagonal line and I'm going to cut off that excess, okay? So I will do that to all eight of these. So we're gonna grab our awesome little pinwheel block and we are going to start assembling our star. So, I think that's right. Yes, it looks right. Like I said, you want to do this before you even start sewing because you want to make sure that this is right and um, it can be a little bit tricky sometimes to to get this part of it so I don't know why but it just does well at least it is for me anyway so I guess I just what I'm trying to say is I recommend doing this first because it will help you tremendously. I don't think that's right. I think I have this wrong. As a matter of fact, I know I have it wrong. <laughs> there we go. Yep. As you can see, we've laid out the star part. And now we're gonna put our corners on here. And voila, we have put our block together. So now what we need to do is we need to attach the rows. So what I do first is I start with the middle first. So I'm just gonna take these two pieces here and I'm going to nest them so that the star points will come together here at the bottom. And I'm gonna put a clip here so I know which side that I'm gonna sew on, which is 
which is this one here, okay? I'm going to do the same thing here. And I'm going to put another clip right there so that I know that, that is where I'm going to start sewing my quarter of an inch right there. So that is what I'm going to do. I'm gonna sew these pieces and then I will finger press them and then I will attach them to the actual pinwheel itself. I get asked about this all the time. Where's your pink chair? Well, it's right here and I love it. Just start me out here. So this part. Okay. Trim my lead off. I'm gonna trim what's in between there, and then I'm gonna come over here and I'm going to press these. Now, it's okay to press these open or you can press them to a side. It really doesn't matter at this point. Um, so I'll probably just go ahead and press these open, finger pressing them. This just cuts down on the amount of bulk that gets put onto the, the pinwheel. So I'm just going to go ahead and line this up right here. So you still want to match up your seam. You could press it to go the opposite direction. Actually, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to press this this way so that I can match this up with the seam on the back side here. But you can press it flat and you can do it the way that I was showing you. It just depends on what you want to do with it. So this is how I'm going to do this one. And I keep cutting my threads. I don't know why I keep doing this. So this is getting kind of bulky, so I am going to press this flat, this seam that we just created here, because it is getting quite bulky. So if you're going to be quilting these quilt, you know, the blocks and stuff, you're going to want to um, reduce as much bulk as you possibly can. Unfortunately, when you're making stars or you're making pinwheels, you get a lot of bulk. So, just try and pay attention to that because it's pretty normal, you know. Here we just created this little seam here and now we're going to just press it open again just like we did the last one with our finger. I'm going to go press this with the iron really quick and then I'll be back to show you how we do the rest of this. All right so I just went and grabbed the other two pieces that we had set up on our uh, star and we're just going to sew these pieces together. And again, I mark them so I know which side I want to start on with these. So one of these is the top, the top star 
uh, points and the other one is the bottom. Okay, in case you're wondering. So I just clip those and I do finger press. I'm just finger pressing them to the side. Now what I need to do is I need to take our two white pieces that we had at the top and I'm just going to sew them on the sides of our top one and I will also sew it on the sides of our bottom one. And then our star will be ready to be put on to our pinwheel. The assembly goes very quickly once you have everything um, together and set out. Then you'll know where all your pieces need to go. press this out and I have to take this over to the iron just to press it so that it lays nice and flat you will want to do the same when you're doing this so that's what I'm going to do I'm going to build those up This is where you want to make sure that everything is kind of lining up and laying nicely the way you want it to. Um, okay, and then you just start sewing down. piece done we'll press that out I'm gonna go ahead and attach this other piece just make sure I've got it on there correctly I do I'm going to tighten that up start sewing I'm going to press it out and I'll show you the finished product. Okay, we're all done. There you go. Ta-da. Awesome, right? It turned out so beautiful. I am so happy with the way that this turned out. So, two different looks. All I did was use uh, the same color of the darker fabric and the lighter fabric. And in this one, I changed it up a bit and gave it an entirely different look by putting these darker shades in the corner. But nevertheless, this is the Mar Martha Washington Star. So, <laughs> you are going to have fun making it and you're going to love the way it turns out because it is so much fun. I do realize that there is a lot of um, trimming up and a lot of cutting, but it really is awesome to learn something new. And it's also great to um, improve your skills. And so this one actually tested mine a little bit. I'm not going to lie. It really did. So, excuse me. So if you're 
If you're feeling a little bit meh about it, don't. It's fun. It's beautiful. It's going to look great in our quilt. And, um, you know, just kind of be, um, just pay attention to more of like the points and things if you want everything to line up perfectly. Mine is not lined up perfectly. You can see it. It's not. And it's okay because I go off the three foot rule. If you can't see it, it doesn't exist. So anyway, if you would like to follow me on social media, the links are down below in the description box. Do not forget to give this video a thumbs up, a like, um, because every time you do, it helps YouTube to show my video to more and more people. Um, don't forget to click the little bell and subscribe. You'll get notified each and every time I upload an awesome new video. And we have tons of fun here. Feel free to share if you'd like because sharing is caring. And keep on crafting. See you guys next time. Bye-bye.